because with this bike being so small and low CC, if you have the expert skill, you can go full aggression, full hooligan on this bike, on the street and in parking lots, and still stay legal and not run into a parked car. Hi, it's your doodle on a motorcycle. This 2020 Honda Gram is the first bike I ever rode. Not the specific one, but a Honda Gram five years ago, almost to the day in the MSF course. And I know some of you are gonna want some cons, so I'm gonna let you know what those are towards the end. First off, thank you so much, Jay, for lending me one of your spare bikes after you got in an accident on your Ninja 400. Jay uses this bike to get around town and just do short errands nearby. And I'm guessing once he puts on some crash protection, that's when he's gonna do some hooligan shit on it. I've got just a few hours before I gotta return this bike and I wanted you to have a beautiful background, so that's why we're outside. I actually considered this as my first bike when I first got into motorcycles. In many countries, 125cc is all you need. But I found out here in America, this bike tops out at about 62 miles an hour. Some states, it's illegal to ride it on the highway and people on the highway are usually going up to about 80 miles per hour, if not more. So I decided as my first bike, I'd need some more CCs. I've ridden this bike just a couple of times to work. I couldn't ride with it on the highway to work, so I took it on back roads, which is very industrial. And obviously it's so light, nimble. I'm flat footing on it, but I still made myself put one foot down just to keep that, those good habits ingrained. This is the only bike I have ever gone full throttle on. And I was topping out at about 52 miles an hour, going slightly uphill. And it took me a while to get there. Is it clear yet? I'm going. Oh my gosh, this is full throttle. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Good job, Gromby. So I got a little impatient riding with it to work. So I only did it for two days. And after that, it was parking lot and in my driveway, fun, short balancing drills. I originally thought that a Honda Grom was nothing but a MSF training bike. But now I've learned it's extremely popular all around the world, as many countries don't go higher than 125, maybe 300 CC in the motorcycles they ride. And actually I found out in an interview with Danoff on YouTube uh, that in Sweden, when you turn 16, you can get a scooter and then you can get a 125cc bike. And then once you turn 18 is when you can go higher level CC. Here in the USA where we don't have these, those rules, you can pretty much get any CC you want anytime you want, as long as you have an M-Class license. The Honda Grom is an excellent addition to anyone that already has a collection of bikes and I've noticed especially very popular with people that I would consider very advanced riders, either advanced track day riders or advanced hooligans. And I think the reason is, is because with this bike being so small and low CC, if you have the expert skill, you can go full aggression, full hooligan on this bike, on the street and in parking lots and still stay legal and not run into a parked car. Once I realized this, I really wanted to do some hooligan shit for the first time in my goody two shoes riding career. But this bike only has 300 miles on it, no crash protection. So the guy who lent it to me said that once he got some crash protection installed and bumped it up himself, that I could practice that. So I better make sure to return it to him in beautiful condition so I don't change his mind. One of my girlfriends that has done dozens of track days she recently got a Kawasaki 125cc, I think. And she had been having trouble getting her knee down on the track. She practiced her body positioning on the 125, got her knee down, and now she can get her knee down no problem on the track. Track riders will, will have their track bike and they'll have a little bike for just getting around on the off track throughout the day. Probably one of the coolest things about this bike, of course being so low and also so light, is that element of being able to practice things that are difficult on your bike. Like my current bike is a Triumph Street Triple R 675. That's it, 
in the corner right over there. A lot of things I can't do yet because I don't have the perfect technique down. And it's been a struggle, especially if I don't have an instructor right there telling me exactly where to put my hand, exactly where to put my foot. But I found that with this bike, I can look at a video on YouTube and practice some short rider balance drills and things that is really difficult with my bike. For example, since I raised my bike back to stock height so that I could get the muscle memory of being able to ride a much wider variety of bikes. After doing that, I could no longer duck walk it in and out of parking spots. So the way to move a bike around, what many people recommend is facing the bike, putting one hand on the tail bag, one hand on the handlebars. That way you can look back and forth depending on the direction you're going. On my Street Triple R, I can't do that. It has to be leaned against my hip. But with the Honda Grom, I can do that easily. I can move it in and around. So that's been really cool to be able to practice. And some other balance drills are really simple with it. There's one drill you can do to get used to the weight of your bike, where you walk around your bike practicing holding it up with just one hand. So that's another thing that's really simple to do and practice the muscle memory of with this little Honda Grom. Kind of like if you do jujitsu, you might practice some of the self-defense moves on someone your size or about your size. And then once you've practiced the skills enough, then your instructor will say, okay, now go practice that hip throw on someone twice your size. But if you start out that way, you may really mess something up. Now, the cons on the Honda Grom. So where the handlebars are placed, if you mount your phone on it, it's not like the handlebars are straight up and up high right in your field of view. So if you do use your phone for navigation, visual navigation anyways, then you are going to have to look down and when you do, you're not gonna be able to see the road very well. You also need to track your gears. I haven't had to do that since my first bike. My Triumph tells me that. But on this bike, you've gotta remember what gear you're in. It has four gears total. So there definitely were some times where I was like, I need more power. And I was like, oh, I'm already in the top gear. My bad. This tank is so little, it only takes one gallon of gas, but it does last a long time. So it's so little, it makes up for that. And if you get this bike and you find yourself struggling with closing the gas tank cap, I find that you just have to push it in real hard until you hear a click before you can take the key out. I definitely struggled with that for about 400 seconds. I've never carried a passenger before, except for if you count going a mile an hour for about five feet and I told my girlfriend to get off that I was gonna drop her for sure. I had never been so wobbly in my life. This bike does have passenger pegs. Not sure how much power you're gonna get out of adding a passenger on here, but good luck, I believe in you. And under the seat is surprisingly roomy. You could definitely fit a wallet, just some little things if you're on a quick day trip. So now it is one cylinder. So you will notice that particularly once you hit about 30 miles per hour. And of course the way it's geared, you do have to shift up about every 10 miles per hour. So another sweet feature is that the 2020 Honda Grom does come with those 90 degree angles to put an air into your tires, which is such a nice feature. And I'm surprised that not all brands do that. I did ride this bike on some pretty wet roads when I first picked it up. So I got it really dirty, as pristine as it was. So I'm gonna clean this before I return it to Jay in just a few hours. I've got about, maybe about a dozen bike reviews right here. See if I've ridden any other bikes you're considering.